Les experimented on the guitar like no one else. He, he knew the guitar was, uh, had a big future, but nobody believed in it like he did. And so what he created was sound that nobody ever heard. And then he could record that sound and play that live and get it to sound the same way. It was almost impossible. But he did it. And there were many other guitar players, mind you, but never had that Les Paul sound. He knew what he created, and he knew what he was. And one day he said to me, Tom, he said, you know, I gave my whole life to the guitar. And it's pretty, pretty emotional right now. In the days when I was in high school, I used to play the jukebox and play Les Paul and Mary Ford. He had a high fidelity on his, on his records, on his 78 records that were unbelievable. When you put the nickel in the jukebox and listen to Les Paul and Mary Ford, it just came out like today's music, like CDs today. It came out so beautifully clear, and what he played was unbelievable. You couldn't believe it, how he did it. And the way Mary sung also was unbelievable. And then when you went to another record in those days, it would just drop down. The level would be so low, but Les was, just came out brilliant. It was unbelievable. I agree with James. Lou because from a musician's point of view, I'm a pianist, Les is a guitarist, but what st stands out about Les's sound, his amazing sound, is the purity of the tone, the, the exact intonation and the, the, the uh, clarity and the attack right. that he had uh, in the way he approached his technique on the guitar. He had amazing uh, clear attack and tone and you, you could tell his sound from any other guitarist instantly. And these guys right would away. agree, I'm sure. Yeah, let's right not away. forget that he was a fabulous jazz guitar player, not just a pop guitar player first, and, and really did innovative, innovative playing way back in the 30s when nobody was doing it at all, when he worked with Fred Waring with his trio then. So this was not new. He's trio a here. Pioneer, pioneer on the electric guitar right. in the jazz field. And then before no jazz, question. he was country. Right. Yeah, That's he right. was country before jazz. He had a sense of, uh, rhythmically speaking, he had a sense of swing that's unparalleled, you know. Um, and then you couple that with his way of interpreting a melody, the, the sweet way he would play a melody like Somewhere Over the Rainbow, you know, would make people in the audience oh, get very yeah. emotional. Oh, yeah. yes. Absolutely. And then he'd, he'd come back, and then he'd come back with this ferocious jazz uh, attack, you know. Mm -hmm. So he had the best of both worlds with his music. And, of course, that's going to keep it fresh and vital. We, we used to see all ranges of uh, fans in here, ranging from kids in high school, right. you know, who worshipped him and, and uh, knew his music, to, you know, people older than he was. So what, what does that tell you? He was a very much, uh, it was always fresh and, and vital. And the fact of the matter is, is that people still can't get what Les Paul did no. with the guitar and records no. today. Even if they no. can duplicate it with a, with a computer, uh, that still doesn't sound anything like what he did with right. his records. No. It just, no. that's the way it is. Les always believed in the melody of a song. And if you came into a club and you were to see him perform, you could go out humming that melody. Right. Not a lot of notes, which you couldn't hum. And he believed in the melody, and I think the melody is the most prettiest thing in the world. If you want to hear a song, like Over the Rainbow, you want to hear, da dee ba 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 You want to hear that. You don't want to hear anything else except the melody. And that's what we lost. A, a, Unbelievable. The best. The best.